This is Rajendra Desai of National Center for People's Action in Disaster Preparedness. Today I'm going to talk about the multi-hazard retrofitting of masonry buildings, which is the most viable option for disaster risk reduction. Now, these are the examples of few retrofitted schools. When we look at the numbers of damage, destruction, and deaths of the last several earthquakes and other disasters in the country, we find that these numbers are huge. And they also mean that the funds which are meant for development get transferred for the reconstruction. So looking at all these different hazards that we have, such as seismic, high-speed wind, and flood, uh, the buildings which are vulnerable to a particular hazard are likely to suffer damage and pose danger to the occupants if that hazard strikes. Now, such vulnerabilities can be reduced, if not totally eliminated, by retrofit. You know, in India, we have lacks of these unengineered masonry and reinforced concrete frame buildings that are vulnerable as they violate the basic rules of construction and also they lack the disaster resistant features. Now, to reduce the vulnerability and ensure safety, the most common approach has been to demolish and rebuild as it's easier to work with a clean slate. But the question is, will we ever have enough resources to demolish and rebuild all these buildings? Would it be better to restore and retrofit this building so that scarce resources can go much longer? Now, why retrofitting is a better option? Number one, it requires neither demolition nor removal of debris, which are integral part of reconstruction and which costs a lot of money. Number two, it makes, uh, you know, it involves making of small changes only to some components of the existing building. And this means that it's five times cheaper and faster than reconstruction. Conveniences which are created in the house or the building are not entirely lost. And it can be done in phase and incremental manner so that it becomes more manageable in terms of resources and time. And in today's day of global warming and climate change, this is the most important attribute that is the greenest option for reducing vulnerability. This Retrofitting can also help save valuable heritage of the vernacular architecture, since people will not have to demolish their old buildings. And finally, this can ensure long-term safety against future hazards for most number of people with least amount of money and time with minimum hardship. Now looking at the weaknesses in masonry construction, they're best manifested during a disaster such as the picture on the left just implies that the masonry is poor. Or the picture on the right, it, it clearly says that the wall-to-wall -wall connection simply did not exist. Picture on the bottom left says that the, the gable band was missing and the connection between the gable and the roof was missing. And the diagonal cracks like these in the lower light and picture shows that the in-plane shear strength is less. Uh, you know, the delamination of renumerable walls is most common and it happened because of absence of through stones and the horizontal crack at the base of the gable just indicates that roof diaphragm is not there. <clears throat> the diagonal crack like this also indicates that the bands are missing and a crack column of masonry simply says that reinforcement is not there. Now for each Weakness, there is a measure, a retrofitting measure, such as for renumerable masonry, one can put in cast in stitch stitting element so that delamination does not take place. And uh, one can install the seasoning belts at different levels. And uh, if, you know, for the vertical reinforcement, splints can be installed on the, on the wall corners. Uh, the, Openings can be encased with weld mesh. 
And if there are too many openings, even few of the openings can be closed. And the roof can be anchored using uh, GI wires or other simple means. And similarly, the RCC slabs also can be anchored to the wall. Uh, timber frames can be strengthened using D braces and the masonry pillars can be jacketed and roofs, diaphragms can be created by installing diagonal braces. Now, you know, we have retrofitted over 800 masonry buildings in the last 26 years in seismic zone three, four, and five of the subcontinent. It all started back in the Latour earthquake, and then came the Chamoli earthquake in Uttarakhand in 2000, and then came Kacha earthquake, where we worked in Ahmedabad as well as large parts of Gujarat, and then came Kashmir earthquake and our interventions in 2006 and seven, and then our interventions in Delhi and UP, and finally came the Nepal earthquake of 2015. Now, uh, in Latour, uh, we retrofitted 150 houses with the house owners' funds. And these were done under uh, Professor Garia's Arya's guidance. It involved the retrofitting of heavy mud roofing supported on random rubble masonry mud mortar. And along with this, we trained 575 government engineers and 1,000 building artisans. In Gujarat, after the Kutch earthquake, uh, we are part into retrofitting of 550 infrastructure buildings of different types of masonry. And uh, these involved also training of artisans and government engineers on a large scale. In Kashmir, uh, we did the first demonstration retrofitting of random rubble masonry and with tin roof. And along with that, we trained 30 master craftsmen. And uh, in Delhi, as a sort of a pre disaster intervention for Government of India, we retrofitted five masonry schools, which were up to three stories high, and they were basically built to brick masonry in cement mortar. And these were coupled with training of uh, Municipal Corporation of Delhi engineers. Uh, also in Kashmir, uh, we retrofitted a large subdivisional hospital, uh, which was done with the help of class one contractor that we had to train. And most interestingly, it took only two months to retrofit this huge building, even though the outpatient did not permit us to work inside the building until 2 p.m. in the afternoon. And finally, in the recent years, uh, we evolved a containment reinforcement system to retrofit brick and stone masonry in mud mortar up to two and a half stories high using GI wires and weld wire mesh. And this too was accompanied with training of a large number of engineers and artisans. Now, this particular option is appropriate for the hill regions of Himalaya, where taking cement and steel create logical nightmare. Uh, I would also like to show uh, the buildings which have been demolished instead of retrofitted, uh, such as school buildings back in Kashmir. A uh, number of school buildings were damaged but they could have been easily retrofitted, but they were ultimately demolished. Same way in 2013, Uttarakhand Kedarna tragedy. After that, a large number of buildings of schools, which are only lightly damaged, were scheduled for uh, demolition instead of retrofitting. Now, the present scenario of retrofitting you know, says that there has been very little pre-disaster action and uh, retrofitable buildings have been abandoned or demolished and they they've been rebuilt primarily because number one most engineers who are the principal actors are ignorant about it and they find it more painstaking and hence they don't recommend it so few authorities promote retrofitting without the endorsement of their own engineers people do not readily accept the retrofitting as they find it rather abstract and contractors and masons are ignorant about retrofitting. The building professionals find retrofitting economically unattractive. There's too much of trouble for them. So in short, the retrofitting delivery system does not exist. Now, when it comes to the know-how uh, and the guidelines, IS 13935, the Bureau of Indian Standards for Repair and Seismic Strengthening of Buildings has been there for a long time and we have extensively used it. Now, with that, 
and the actually on ground execution of retrofitting of local masonry variants for demonstration as well as hands on training of artisans and engineers. We have been able to produce a number of manuals and guidebooks, which started in Latu and then came to Kashmir and then came to Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand and finally in Nepal. Now, all these things were accompanied with awareness programs in the communities via meetings, video shows, poster shows, street plays, and also they were accompanied with confidence building exercises. And this was done using shock table and a lot of them were public events. And, uh, and we also made videos which were later used for confidence building. Now taking retrofitting forward, retrofitting today is in its infancy. You must understand that. So government policy for managing disaster risk should place top priority in vulnerability reduction of existing non engineered buildings through retrofitting. And for this, the original retrofitting guidelines for local construction system of different regions must be evolved. Easy to understand information on the subject must be made easily available in local languages. And this must be accompanied with vigorous and sustained awareness and confidence building of communities at large. Now, along with this, the public agencies owning buildings must be sensitized to assign the due priority to retrofitting of their buildings. Materials required for retrofitting must be made available. Standardization of retrofitting measure needs to be done and SOR needs to be developed so that it can be conducted in the government system. And needless to say, we need to conduct on-site training of engineers, contractors, and building artisans. Retrofitting, so that retrofitting still becomes easily available in the market. And finally, through all this, we create the retrofitting delivery system. So finally, I'll say that most of the country is exposed to the danger of the potential destructive natural phenomena, such as earthquakes, cyclones, and floods. And we need to use retrofitting to bring long-term safety against future disasters without wasting scarce resources of the country. And in this, ideally, it'll be best to retrofit the lifeline facilities first, such as schools, hospitals, police stations, government officials, to set the precedence and simultaneously through that create the delivery system. So I'll, I'll end by saying that as the saying goes, best is the enemy of better. Instead of full retrofitting, even partial retrofitting with the funds permit will reduce vulnerability and bring safety. Thank you.